We're drinking in the rain And eating in the rain What a glorious feeling We're happy again We're all in a crowd So deprived of A pine and some darts And pub grub that we love Stuffing chips in our face Along with some fried plates What with all the rain There's swimming on the plates Wolfing soggy food With a happy refrain And drinking and eating in the rain We drink lots of pints Of our favourite brew Then we put on our masks When we go to the loo That's a large for me head For a pint a Heineken that is a ahead. It's been heavily snowing, so let the stormy clouds chase COVID out of this place. Come on with the rain, I've a pint in my face. The same again. I just can't refrain Cause we're drinking Just drinking in the rain We're drinking And drinking in the rain Cheers! Oh, hello, Philip. Welcome to heaven. Oh, hello, Diana. Didn't think you'd be here. Yeah. Well, yeah, boo sucks to you, yeah. Oh, um, by the way, uh, the Queen Mother's here as well. Oh, all right, Phil. <laughs> Surprised they let you up here. Do you fancy a drink? they got gin and Dubonnet on tap. Oh, not the mother-in-law as well. I don't believe it. Did I ever tell you about the time I met that nice Adolf Hitler who gave me lovely pearl necklace? Ooh. It's not this for a game of soldiers. I'm going down to the other place. Oh, well done, Queen Mother. Your plan worked. Right you are, Diana. Ooh. Gin all round. Ooh. You're watching The Hughes at Ten with me, the sonorous and very serious Hugh Edwards. Oh, they're sexy. The headlines. Sports news. Rachel Blackmore has become the first woman to ride a Grand National winner. This follows the triumph of Jennifer Acuri, who achieved the notable success of riding a Grand Nationalist. After officiating at the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral on Saturday, the Archbishop of Canterbury came in for criticism and made claims that he'd actually buried Prince Philip three days earlier. A lobbying watchdog has revealed that a top civil servant joined financial firm Greensill Capital as an advisor while still working for the government. The watchdog were told that if they had any concerns over the arrangement, they should contact Greensill Capital's head office at number 10 Downing Street. Well, howdy doody there, folks, and welcome to Emmett's Gun Emporium and Minimal Force Self-Defense Clinic. My name is Emmett and Fire, and I am the proud owner of this here establishment. Ah! Oh, sorry, officer. <laughs> Thought you was one of them viruses. Don't want any of those viruses coming around here. <laughs> Not here in this county, anyway. <laughs> so 
anyways, it's looking like Biden's won. Now him and his pinko liberal gender neutral rainbow pussies are going to pass new laws on out here gun control. Hmm. Well, they don't bother me none too much, nor any of my brothers or any of our good lady cousins was all happily married unto in the name of the good Lord. Yee-haw! <laughs> Oh no! I shot Donald! He'd been a family duck since Reagan was president. God rest his soul. Now, we consider ducks to be family members, seeing as how they all has wet feet just like we all do. Anyway, now I have hundreds of satisfied customers and dozens of endorsements from local undertakers, funeral planners, and grave diggers. That's right. I am vital to the local economy and just the kind of small businessman whose votes were keeping that good old boy Donald Trump in that there White House. Which is why I am on my way to that there Washington, and I'm taking this bad boy with me. <laughs> now, you heard about a weapon called the Widowmaker? Well, this one's called the Vote Counter, and I'm going down to that there Washington to go and assist them poor illiterate Democrat senators when there's a voting on Biden's new gun control. Only gun anyone really needs is right here on the end of my hand. It's called a trigger finger. Yeehaw! Oh, dang pinko Democrat camera. I knew you was watching me. Man. My name is Vladimir Putin, and these are my nipples. On the occasion of the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, we say farewell to the Duke of Edinburgh. A great man, a great leader, a great example a great consort and a great war hero. What more is there to say, apart from the fact I have great nipples? Now he is dead. It wasn't me. It wasn't me, was it? Hello, my loves, it's me, your Auntie Vax. Oh, another week, another full mailbag. How exciting. Time for our first letter. Dear Auntie Max, I read that the United Nations has said there's over a million viruses that could cause another pandemic. Now, I don't trust the One World Government, but it does agree with things I see from reputable news sources like Facebook. Should I be worried? Yours befuddled in Belfast. Well, that's interesting befuddled. I too instinctively distrust anything a globalist pan-governmental agency says, but it turns out it's true. Over a million potential pandemic viruses. I mean, what a relief! <laughs> With that much choice, there's no way Bill Gates will be able to pick what one to unleash next. He's famously indecisive. Just look at all those different versions of Windows. So, we're probably safe for now. <laughs> Egypt held a special parade with full orchestra and a light show whilst transferring 22 ancient royal mummies to a new museum in Cairo. A huge crowd lined the streets to watch the moving of the ancient and revered corpses. Arthur is mistakenly revealed to be the tour bus of the Rolling Stones. The government has been criticised by the tourist industry for its traffic light system for holiday destinations. It's expected that many travellers will be put off by the complicated procedure except for cyclists who plan to ignore it completely. The real reason why Meghan Markle didn't attend the funeral of the Duke of Edinburgh has been revealed. She didn't have a dress that was the right shade of black. Oh, hello, Mooncar. Oh, hi, Dyspraxia. Have you heard about me? Truth. Oh, yeah, I did. If you would say the shelves are stocking with expensive bills are shocking Well, which says no? Not a waitress Good shoppers to you, cheaper deals preferred Now just say a four letter word that waitress I pay through their nose If your credit cards you like, your cheap cards you like Your bargains you like, your tea gym you like Your no test you like, your paper strange you like The waitress is a no so even if I was a banker, for which one is I would have had to do my home to live like gold. Well, thanks for letting me know, Dyspraxia. Yeah? Well, I may have written Daily Mail. It must be true. Yeah. I played Meghan Markle. Yeah. Mm.
Good evening. Good evening. You're tuned to Russia Today, your old Russian news station of unbiased news from Soviet, sorry, <laughs> glorious Republic of Mother Russia. With me, John or Barry or something. And me, Colin, but not the caterpillar. We didn't do it. So, Comrade Alexander Petrov, I, I mean Colin. <laughs> da, Comrade Ruslan Boshirov, I mean John O'Barry or something. Now what do you say to accusations that we spied and blew up that warehouse in Czech Republic? Hmm? Very sad. We were not spying. Very beautiful spires in Prague, you know. Very pointy. We were too busy creating chocolate-covered caterpillars to undermine capitalist pig dogs of the West. Steady there, Colin. <laughs> we don't do propaganda here on RT. If you want that, you go to BBC. Well, that's all from us here at RT. Remember, Nipples is watching. Das das Vidalia. Vidalia. Oh, good, we're out. Now, Comrade Petrov, it's time to get on with our plans for the European Super League. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, children. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. Once upon a time, there was a voracious supermarket chain who gobbled up profits of its popular caterpillar cake called Colin. Everybody loved gobbling Colin until one day a rival supermarket chain, one that the snooty M&S chain looked down its noses at, came up with a similar caterpillar cake called Cuthbert. The M&S monster was angry and sued the creators of poor Cuthbert. And thus, the Caterpillar Cake Wars became a clumsy metaphor for how capitalism eats itself. Meanwhile, in his hut in the Cotswolds, former Prime Minister David Cameron looked upon the Colin the Caterpillar story and realised they had something in common. He too was a metaphor for capitalism eating itself. Once famed for his conjugation with a pig in his jolly old school days, Ding Dong Day realised all he had to do to fit the metaphor was to pop in on his old Bullingdon chum, Boris. Boris reminded Dave that he once called him a greasy piglet. <laughs> How they laughed as they both stuck their noses in the trough and then helped themselves to shares in Greensill and gave their punkawalla Rishi a nice tip. Then... Ding Dong Dave gobbled up coins from a very big bank. He swallowed whole a nice wad for lobbying his young friend Rishi. He guzzled expensive shampoo in boardrooms across the land and he got away with his offshore account in Panama. He lobbied and lobbied and lobbied until everyone around him felt sick. He greedily gobbled and sleazily lobbied until one day he realised that he too had turned into a shiny faced and greasy piglet. Just like his friend Boris. Then Ding Dong Dave retired to his very expensive shepherd's hut and fetched up a bunch of boring memoirs on how he screwed the entire country with his Brexit referendum. And just like the United Kingdom, we reached the end. Well, wasn't that sickening, children? But don't worry, with the existence of First Past the Post and with Keith Starmer leading the Labour Party, there'll be more tales of sleaze for years to come. Well done, Britain. You deserve it. Sleep well, children. North Korea has announced it will not take part in the Tokyo Olympics this year, saying the decision is to protect its athletes from COVID-19, although they will still send a delegation of chefs to Crafts. French MPs have voted to suspend flights by domestic airlines where the train takes less than two and a half hours, which if adopted in England means we could start getting flights from Brighton to London. My fellow Americans, following yet another terrible mass shooting, gun control is one of the most important issues facing our great nation. When the Second Amendment was written, I remember saying at the time, boys, what if the future guns are more dangerous than the average musket? Once again, old Joe Biden was right, and now we need to ban things like ghost guns. We have people out on our streets with these ghost guns right now an unlicensed nuclear reactor that shoots a beam to snare ghosts. If you cross the beams, the universe could end as we know it. 
Now, as someone who could be a ghost at any moment, I find this disturbing. Who are you going to call? The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, that's who. Speaking of which, call your congressman today. Because without public support, gun control is dead as a duck. And then that duck will be at risk from ghost guns, which is tragic. <sighs> <sighs> Heil, Chancellor Merkel. I wish you wouldn't do that. We don't do the Heil stuff anymore. Oh, yeah, Mein Führer. All the Mein Führer stuff. Gosh, Scheiße. Now, tell me your latest findings on AstraZeneca vaccine. Well, when I went to get my AstraZeneca vaccination, I tripped on ein step, fell over, and bang and crack in my head and neck. Yeah, the nurse helps me to my feet as she tells me I am not the first to trip over ein step. Someone else was going for an AstraZeneca jab and has also fallen over and bang and crack in the head and neck. So, you thought there might be a connection between banging the head and the neck of the AstraZeneca vaccine? Yeah, and my research shows a definite correlation. We find out of 2.7 million people who took AstraZeneca, 31 people get a bang and crack on their head. Four tripped on the same step as me, ten in the same vaccination center in Berlin on the way out, which had quite a small rear exit door. And fifteen were all sat on chair under cupboard where they kept the needles, or the cupboard door was left open after they had the jab. So what are we going to do about it? We recommend only the people with wheelchairs take AstraZeneca vaccine. Well, if that's what the science is saying we should do, we shall do it. Have you discovered any other side effects mit AstraZeneca? Yeah, uh, one German crossing the road was run over and killed. And they had just had AstraZeneca jab? Nein. Were they on their way to get an AstraZeneca jab? Nein. Is there any connection between their death and AstraZeneca? Yeah, they were run over by a lorry carrying the AstraZeneca vaccine. I have heard enough. We should ban this thing. Jawohl, mein Führer. Dummkopf. Entschuldigung. Ah, yes, hello. So Timothy Canaby Hyde here. Welcome to my little place here in the East. Nice of you to drop by. It's very quiet here most of the time. Of course, China is really jolly important these days. Not just a bunch of gamblers and opium smokers anymore. Awfully big navy as well, you may have noticed. So many battleships, all those terribly big guns. A bit like ours was when we still had an empire. Oh yes, those were the days. Can't think what they need the ball for. Now, of course, they do need to patrol the China Sea, I suppose. I mean, just named after them, after all. Now, apparently, some of the neighbours don't like it and complain, but I mean, really. <laughs> suppose the English Navy wasn't allowed to patrol the English Channel. Same thing, as far as I can see. Now, you may have heard that there's been a bit of bother over this place called Taiwan. A lot of nonsense, of course. Now, I thought it was a lovely gesture of the Chinese to arrange a fly pass by the People's Air Force. Isn't in Taiwan the island we used to own? What was it the other one? Hong something or other? Anyway. Had those chaps from the World Health Organization round for cocktails and canapes the other day. Splendid fellows. Seemed very concerned about bats or something, I seem to recall. Though I had no idea they were such enthusiasts for the game of cricket. Perhaps one will invite them to Hove next time they're in. They mentioned something about a Wuhan lab that they didn't see. Which was very peculiar. I said, what a shame. Lovely dog, the Wuhan lab. I used to have one myself. Very loyal, very obedient. Well, uh, my moustache. Got a soiree with President Ping this evening. Such a delightful chap, don't you find? Now, I know he says he thinks democracy is overrated, but, well, one does tend to agree. Don't you? Chin Chin. Next letter. Dear Auntie Max, I was very sad to hear about the death of Prince Philip at 99, or 492 in reptilian humanoid years. Something has been concerning me though. What's with the flags being at half mast? Apparently it's a sign of respect, but there must be some hidden message from sceptical in Shropshire. Well, sceptical, you're quite right. It's the most obvious message through flags since semaphore. 
and this time it wasn't used by the Beatles on another album cover to tell us that Paul McCartney is dead. The only problem is interpretation is the flag halfway up the pole or halfway down the pole. The way you interpret it shows whether you are a positive or a negative person. So let's put it this way. If you're assuming the best, there's no way you're a proper truther. I hope that helps. <laughs> now, after the break, we'll be questioning whether national mourning still occurs in the afternoon and the evening. Bye, loves! <laughs> Darius, the world's biggest bunny rabbit, has been stolen from his home in Worcestershire. In other news, the world record was broken in nearby Birmingham for the largest ever rabbit pie. He followed one around the world when greeting folk as one is always wont to do. <laughs> He used to charm the locals with a handshake and then ask them, Here, yeah, what do you do? Then afterwards we'd pop into a quiet little country for a drink or two. And then he'd go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like, Stay around here too long, you end up slitty eyed. The firm did not approve when he first put the moves on me way back in 43. Although it caused them all to spare, one didn't care right then, it was all Greek to me. He's been with one so many years, it's safe to say that he was one's strength and stay. Reaching heads of state down to the plebs, they'd laugh at all the silly things he'd say. <laughs> then just before one got through meeting, all the plebs of fight to come away unscathed. Then he'd go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like, You're too fat to be an astronaut. But one love you. Do you still throw spears at each other? I miss you. This sounds like an Indian installed it. One thanks you. See you soon, sausage. Of course, Chin Chin means small willy in Chinese. Not many people know that. Mm.